Be ready when you, whenever you text me that we're live, we'll be going. Okay, we are live. So at 7.01 p.m., I will open tonight's meeting of the Lunenburg Select Board of Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. <clears throat> In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. Town of Lunenburg, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the CDC re regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent its spread. All town facilities are open during limited hours and by appointment only outside of those hours. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, Section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. This meeting will be broadcast live through local access cable on Facebook Live on the public access Facebook page and will be able to be found on the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours of its conclusion. If you would like to participate in this meeting uh, and you have a computer or a, a smartphone or a tablet, you can join using the Zoom application and the webinar ID for this meeting is 909-174-0347. If you do not have a smart device, but would still like to participate via phone, you can dial into 1-888-475-4499. And once again, the webinar ID is 909-174-0347. Uh, for those on a smart device using Zoom, please acquaint yourself with the raise my hand feature. That will show me who is wanting to speak. And if you're on a phone and you want to raise your hand via the telephone, uh, please use star nine. I will call on people as I see their hands are raised and when the time is appropriate to call on such people. Uh, okay. Uh, as this is a remote meeting, I have to make sure we have everybody here by roll call. So, in the order I see them, Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Dwyer. Here. Mr. Marino. Present. Mr. Jeffries. Here. <clears throat> and I for myself, Madam Town Manager, can, are you here with us? Yes. Okay, so we will get started. First thing is to hand it off to our... Pledge of Allegiance Monitor, Ms. Adams, you have it. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I will start tonight by asking if there's any public comment from the board this evening. Seeing none. I would ask if there's public comment from the public this evening. All right, no public comment from anybody. Madam Town Manager, any announcements? None. Okay. I was zooming along here, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, appointments, we have an appointment for an interview uh, for potential Conservation Commission candidate, Mr. Jeffrey Viviano of 338 Sunset Lane. Term to expire June 30th, 2022. Uh, uh, there's Mr. Viviano, so I am going to unmute him. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Viviano. And I see we have, uh, well, I'll get to them. I know, we, I know we have some members of the Conservation Commission on here too, but let's start with, uh, let's start with Mr. Viviano. So uh, as is customary, Mr. Viviano, please contact, you know, let us know a little bit about yourself, the board, sure. some people at home, why you want to be on the Conservation Commission, et cetera, et cetera. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Todd Dwyer 
Um, he was on the Conservation Commission for some years. Uh, he had a very powerful voice. Um, his opinion was held very highly with his background, and he was very reasonable. Uh, so I did learn a lot from Todd, so I, I'd like to first start off thanking Todd. Um, something else I'd like to mention, I had interviewed with the board, um, I believe it was in June of 2019, and I think it was a little controversial time with Conservation Commission, and I did not realize that going into it. I was asked by Elaine Peterson, uh, because I had a talent bank form submitted uh, to attend that uh, selectman meeting, which I did. And it was open for three reappointments, uh, three great gentlemen. They were both reappointed, and I was also interviewed as well, but there was a little controversy there towards that end, end of that. Um, and I, I just want to say that um, I completely understand everything that happened, and I did not take any of that negatively, so it didn't impact anything uh, to me to date. Um, but from that, I was uh, given the opportunity to be an associate member on the board for a little bit to just kind of learn how things uh, go. Um, so it, that was a uh, good experience for me. Um, a little bit uh, my story. Um, I grew up in Acton, Massachusetts. Um, I was born in New York and my parents moved to Acton in, uh, when I was about in fourth grade. So I grew up there and we used to vacation on uh, Lake Shirley uh, quite a bit. Uh, we used to rent a house um, over on kind of the Shirley side. Uh, my parents would rent it, my uncle would rent it, and uh, some of my mother's cousins would rent it. So I spent a good portion of uh, my childhood on Lake Shirley. Um, from that, my parents bought a home on Lake Shirley um, shortly after I graduated high school. So I'm very familiar with Lunenburg. Uh, I've, I've been in the town for quite an amount of time as a child, enjoying um, the wetlands, uh, as you know, conservation does have a lot to do with. Um, my initial studies after high school brought me to civil engineering at University of Lowell. I stayed there for a year and then I made a change uh, in my courses. Um, I took physics, calculus, chemistry. I did take some uh, mechanical design and drawing classes, computer aided design, strength and materials. Um, and then I changed uh, my degree to aviation. I went to Daniel Webster College. Um, I received a bachelor's degree in aviation management flight operations. Um, and it, it kind of opens your eyes. You can see, I guess, the world from a, a much different perspective at that point. Um, you can really enjoy it. Uh, through those travels I've had in aviation, I've, I've been granted the opportunity to uh, embark on many, you know, hikes through places that people might not be able to see um, since I do travel quite a bit. Um, we spend a lot of time in hotels, so I do take advantage of that time to, like, go hiking, um, go into Yellowstone, enjoy that. Um, you know, so I've, I've been to many of, of the national parks, uh, which is, I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, during college and in high school, um, you know, to try make make money, um, I was a, an employee at a large commercial heating, ventilating, and air conditioning contractor. And I worked my, my way up from a mechanic to assistant foreman. Um, in that, I, I developed, I guess you could say, the perspective to take a, a two-dimensional drawing or a blueprint and kind of build that three-dimensional plan in your head. And I think the Conservation Commission deals a lot with um, plans, and I think you really need to see what the final product is going to be, um, what homeowners and what business owners uh, would like to do in these sensitive areas uh, in Lindbergh. So I do have some background on that. Uh, one of the most, I guess, rewarding aspects in that career was uh, the last um, opportunity I had was at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, uh, which is very well conserved uh, with priceless paintings in there. And uh, we had to saw cut the concrete floors in the basement. We put um, welded stainless steel ductwork and had to backfill that. And it, was, it, was a very, um, it was a very fluid environment and it was very, I mean, you had people looking over your shoulder almost every minute of the day to make, to make sure there was very little dust and you know, it, clean rooms everywhere. Uh, we use the chimney stacks as the uh, heating and air conditioning duct work. So it, it was very rewarding to uh, work kind of in that environment like that. Uh, a little bit more about myself. Um, I, I moved to Lunenburg in 2007 up on Gilcrest Street, just north of the, the middle high school there. And But I always wanted to be back on Lake Shirley. And um, through help with friends around town, uh, we were able to find a lot on Lake Shirley. It's actually lots 9 and 10. Uh, it was in family trust. So I worked out. Um, some details uh, to purchase the land 
And the trustee said, I'll tell you what, you can buy it, but you need to do all the work. <laughs> so I, I had to go through all the permitting process through the town and it took about two years. Uh, it was very extensive uh, with the Board of Health, um, figuring setbacks with the building inspector, going through all those policies and procedures. And it was, I would say at least about a year, maybe a year and a half conservation, uh, attending many meetings and going over you know, proposals, changing proposals, and, and just kind of coming to an agreement on what could be done and what could not be done uh, in that wetland protected area on Lake Shirley. So I, I did learn a lot and it was uh, very intriguing to me uh, going through the whole process uh, from start to finish, essentially taking an undeveloped piece of land and uh, kind of building a dream house here uh, in one of these sensitive areas. So that, that took about two years. I did GC the house myself. Um, so I, I had background in construction. Uh, I designed the house myself and we moved in in uh, 2017. Um, some of my hobbies and interests, I completed a, a hunter safety course when I was 16. I used to hunt uh, back in those days. I don't hunt as much uh, these days, but I did enjoy that. Um, I've always, uh, you know, liked to deer and, and pheasant hunt. Um, I love to fish. That's kind of the, th the thing that I, I really enjoy now. I'm a big saltwater fisherman. I like striper fishing. And we've gone after the big bluefin tuna uh, the last few years. So that they're very tough creatures and <laughs> they're very deceiving. They're, they're, uh, but just just an amazing uh, animal, uh, amazing fish. Um, I love hiking, as you know. Um, I'm familiar with uh, the lane. We used to live up on Grillcrest. Uh, we used to go hiking through the woods with our kids, you know, and introducing them to nature. Very familiar with the Robs Hill area now that we live on Sunset. And I've been through miles of that trail system. Um, it's a wonderful area. And we used to hike up on the, uh, the Calgary uh, a lot as well. Um, one of my favorite things to do around here is to hike Mount Watetic. Um, that's a very interesting and kind of demanding climb, depending on which trail you do take. And uh, that's, I guess, a lot about me. I, I think um, I live in town, plan to be here for, for quite a few more years. I am a, I am a, a dues paying member on the Lake Shirley Improvement Corp. Um, I attend maybe one or two, possibly three meetings a year. So I'm, I'm not necessarily involved, but I, I like to kind of maintain my interest in that. Um, I guess what, what I can bring um, to the Conservation Commission is, is the job that I have right now, uh, working as an airline pilot. I, one of the, the major things that you really need to be sharp on is interpreting regulations and uh, company policy procedures and applying those and making sure that they're followed you know, to the law. So uh, that's um, very critical in, the, in the, the industry that I'm in. So I'm, I'm very well versed in that. I think my previous experience as a, a commercial contractor, you know, looking at plans and, you know, kind of developing uh, the ideas that homeowners and business people want, want to build in town and going through that process. Um, I think I do have a unique perspective um, on the, you know, on the commission if I do receive a, a position as being the applicant as well and going through the whole process and seeing uh, exactly what that entails and oftentimes the stresses uh, of uh, some of the things that you do need to um, go through to get this the, the process hopefully approved. Um, um, through all the meetings that I've been through and, and the time that I spent as an associate member, I think I have a good understanding of the Wetlands, Wetlands Protection Act and the town bylaws. Uh, and it's, it's like I said, very intriguing to me. And I have a, um, a high appreciation for nature and conservation. So I think i sum it up. That's it. When you said you've been an associate member, how many meetings have you gone to approximately since your, uh, I, I guess it was in, you said June of 19 was when yeah, you I probably, I mean, I probably attended, I would say at least 10 during the build of our house. And it's, you know, you, you know, you're, you're on the agenda, but you're not really sure when you're going to get called up. So you, you actually witness a lot of, you know, three, four hour meetings uh, going over other proposals other than just your site. So even though I wasn't, I actually meant president, as an associate. Kind of member. Like one. Yeah, I actually but, meant more as an associate member. How many did you I, attend? I honestly think I attended about three meetings, maybe four, and okay. about two site walks. So okay. um, there wasn't really much movement in the commission at that time. So I just really didn't see. Um, it, it's well, it's a considerable amount of time that you do have to put into being in the commission. So I do understand okay. that. Uh, I'll open it up to the board if anybody has any questions for Mr. Viviano. I have a question. 
Go ahead, Mr. Marino. Jeff, how did you fit that bio on the uh, talent bank form? <laughs> 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 no, seriously though, I, that's an important position. So, yeah, I, I hope you approach it with an open mind. Uh, I mean, having gone through it yourself, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You know, you're going to be yeah. dealing with people, a lot of people who have a lot of big dreams, and uh, you know, I yeah. hope you do it as you know as unbiased and impartial as possible, and uh, you know, kind of uh, not an ILS approach, <laughs> <laughs> no. more of a VFR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I see what you did there with the whole pilot talk. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Ms. Adams. Well, whenever we have a vacancy, I always start with a thank you, because although it's an interview when it's uncontested, it's a, a position we need to fill. But I'm also glad you brought up the um, night where there was four candidates for three spots. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Made a motion that night. <laughs> um, the baby wasn't seconded. So it's just nice to see you back. And yep. um, uh, I, you know, it's a long road sometimes, but it, it ends up um, leading you to where you need to be. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Dwyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to give my two cents from my perspective for my time on the Conservation Commission. Um, Mr. Viviano, uh, when he went through the process of uh, getting approval by the, uh, from the Conservation Commission for his house, probably went through, in my six years on the commission, either you know top two or three most uh, uh, demanding uh, uh, applications uh, based on the critical nature of where, where he built yeah. his house in relationship to Lake Shirley and, and what he wanted to do. And um, I can say observing Mr. Viviano in the meetings and um, the way he uh, handled um, our rulings, even when they didn't necessarily go his way, I, I think was a testament to his character. And I think it will, uh, um, will serve him well uh, if, if we uh, appoint him. Thank you, Todd. Mr. Jeffries. I just want to echo the comments uh, from the previous two members and thank you for stepping up. I know that sometimes when you volunteer, you don't always uh, get it the first time around. And uh, certainly it's, uh, you know, being able to uh, learn more about the process and then having gone through it yourself, that certainly provides you with valuable experience. And uh, I do appreciate the additional information tonight with regard to your bio, um, because it's really helpful for us to understand you know, who, uh, who's interested in being on this really critical board. So thank you yep. very much for coming forward. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? I see Mr. Pease has his hand raised. So as a chair of the Conservation Commission, Mr. Pease, you are on. I would just like to say that um, in, I believe that in the last six years, there's been three new members in the Conservation Commission. Uh, one was uh, Tom Bertram Jr. And he served as an associate member before he became a member. Uh, the next was uh, myself. And I served as an associate member before I became a member. And the last was Katie Childs. And uh, she served on the Conservation Commission in her former town of uh, Hudson, where she used to live uh, before she became a member. And so we have a tradition on the Conservation Commission, you know, for quite some time now of uh, getting people, you know, who have, uh, you know, shown an interest in attended meetings and, you know, learn the ropes. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I will have to say that, uh, first of all, our first decision or the first point of discussion outside of this appointment is uh, late breaking news and the board can decide what we want to do with such things. But uh, it was brought to my attention that somebody else has applied uh, or sent in a talent bank form. I don't even know if they officially sent it to, to uh, Elaine, which is the fully proper thing to do. But one came to my attention and I think to Mr. Pease's attention last evening late last evening uh, and the applicant is actually on the Zoom meeting right here, Mr. LaRouche. Uh, so now it's not on the agenda, so we cannot interview Mr. LaRouche. He has not met with the Conservation Commission. 
And the first decision before we go on to Mr. Viviano's uh, furtherance of his is, is does the board want to wait and put Mr. LaRouche on next week? Again, this has been advertised and we had the appointment with Mr. Viviano, but I do want to put it, put it out there to be as transparent as possible. Uh, again, Mr. Viviano, Mr. Viviano has uh, over a year in the application of the talent bank. He has been an associate member. Uh, he has attended meetings and he has now come before us a second time. And just to weigh in as one person on the decision, I am fully prepared to vote on Mr. Viviano tonight, but I am one member of five and I want to be at least full disclosure that we have another applicant and how the board wants to handle that. I will open up the, the floor to that part of this discussion first. Um, I'd like to say something, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Marino. Um, I I tend to agree with you that I think we should go forward with it. And that's not to uh, thwart any enthusiasm on the part of Mr. LaRoche. I think uh, maybe he ought to seek uh, associate membership first, as did Jeff Viviano, um, and uh, maybe uh, go forward in that direction. Um, I think Mr. Viviano is, you know, he's, he's been interested for quite a while, as he stated. Um, and I believe he was passed over last year. So I, I, I agree with you that I'd like to just move forward on this appointment tonight. And that's no, um, you know, I, as I said, uh, Mike, uh, I'm not trying to thwart your enthusiasm. I just think that's the fair thing to do at the time, but I think you should continue. Uh, you know, I hope that you continue your interest and maybe seek this associate membership as well. And I Thank would you. concur with that for the same reasons. Ms. Adams. Oh, hold on. You got to unmute. Um, so what I need some clarification for, and maybe the town manager can help, is I feel like in order for any of this to make sense to me, is what are the, the posting dates? How long is something open for? I mean, I understand if a vacancy remains, we need to keep posting it until it's filled. But in order to understand what somebody's opportunity is to participate and whether or not we should collect up until a point where we have multiple candidates, um, I guess I'm just wondering when this was posted, how long it was posted for, and when we would close the window. Because taking, taking in a talent bank form, I feel like there should be a, a line drawn where we are no longer accepting and when it's advertised, were there dates associated with applying? Oh. We're playing games with me already. Been a long day, folks. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. The posting began on September 24th, expired on the October 4th. And so that met the required 10 days of posting. And the position can be appointed 14 days after the original posting, which was all within the time frame. Can you repeat that one more time? The first day of the posting was September 24th. It expired uh, 10 days thereafter on the 4th. And 14 days from the 4th of which somebody can. 14 uh, days from the original date of posting. The, which would make the final date. Yeah. Um, the 8th. The appointment could have happened. Um, and by and whose applications came in during the range? Only Mr. Viviano's. Okay. So the, I like clouded the situation. Chairman Alonzo said the last application from Mr. LaRouche came in late last night. And so I will make my, 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 my final comment based on whether or not I, I mean, it, it doesn't seem we can entertain another um, candidate when it, they, they didn't meet the, the time criteria. I don't see any path where I could support that. Although it is always nice to have multiple people. It's got to, to me, fit within, within the range. I'm not sure, uh, you know, that just seems like the simple answer. Okay. Mr. Jeffries. 
Yeah, so I want to first thank Mr. LaRouche for coming forward to uh, volunteer to be on the Conservation Commission. Uh, you know, I think it's really important that, you know, our town is, con that we continue to have volunteers step up for the vacancies that we do have. And uh, certainly there's, there's no slight to you on uh, process and how, um, you know, process sometimes, you know, works. So, you know, in this case, Mr. Chair, I, I do believe that certainly, you know, Mr. Mr. LaRouche uh, is encouraged to follow the path of the previous uh, appointees to the Conservation Commission. Uh, I think it's in, you know, I think that part of, this is one of the really important, all boards are important, um, but there's a lot of consequence to what conservation does when it comes to economic development um, and when it comes to what people can and can't do on their property. And I think a vital part of that process is observing, um, you know, learning, learning the ropes for sure, but also that, you know, when, when we have volunteers who, you know, kind of are in the waiting for a year and some change and they come forward and that they get an appointment, uh, that they get a date scheduled um, to be considered, that we follow through on that consideration, mindful of, uh, of their contribution and, and their time to it. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable voting tonight um, to progress Mr. Viviano's uh, appointment to the Conservation Commission. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Ms. Adams, you have another point? Muted. Yeah, um, again. I'll be on the lookout for mutes with me tonight. Um, and so um, one final in um, to the town manager, the, the dates are in the posting that go out. Does it, does it describe the expiration of the, the chance to apply? Is that made clear? She's muted as well, Tom. Yes. <laughs> And a minimized background noise. Um, so the the dates, I don't have the notice of the vacancy in front of me, but we typically put that it um, it would be open until a certain date, but that doesn't preclude people. I want to be clear on that. It doesn't preclude for people from applying after that date. It's just that the charter stipulates it has to be posted for a minimum of 10 days. Okay, and then so my my comment there um, be I think it was a few years back, so it was a different group of I'm not sure who was there for the conversation. It was different selectmen at the time, but this goes to the um, uh, to Mr. Larouche was that um, a lot of times our reappointments take place almost automatically or or too fluidly, um, and so I just want to make a point to both our board and to Mr. Larouche that in the spring when people who currently hold these um, seats are automatically sort of reappointed, there's supposed to be an opportunity for everyone to be a part of that process. And, and, and that I think we need to keep track of who has been on a talent bank form and make sure we reach back out and, and get everybody on board because we, we tried to improve that process. And then this year it was impossible because it was right in the middle of of um, everybody sort of going on lockdown and it just sort of, it happened like it did all the other years. We didn't take the opportunity to um, seek applications from, from other citizens and from the public. So where spring is right around the corner. And so I hope you, um, you know, participate in the application process in the spring. For those listening the, to the point of when you can apply, although we have to post vacancies, Anybody can put in a talent bank form at any point for any committee, any time of the year. We encourage people to do that so that if a, if a vacancy becomes available, that somebody moves out of town, somebody has for some personal reason has to uh, quit early, you know, quit the board early, then the term expires, that we have a talent bank form to go to and we'll be sure to get you. So you don't have to apply just when there's an opening and we encourage people to submit those forms. Mr. Rabbit, as member of the Conservation Committee. Thank you. Um, first of all, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much. We, uh, I, I believe there's a question of timing and awareness that I believe should be addressed. 
because ultimately we're trying to find the best possible candidate for the position. And I fully recognize and appreciate that uh, if someone's been actively as a member who has been an adjunct member, uh, then clearly they, they would deserve something like that. So, but my question is timing. Honestly, we did not find out, and Todd, you can, you can verify that for us, is that we didn't really learn that you were leaving until we did the sidewalk uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. That's when you kind of told us. In fact, I called you the day before because I said, I just saw this in the ledger. What's going on? Who's leaving? Right. And remember, the ledger's got a slice of the town, and I don't know how the other pieces were posted. And there was nothing that said you had to have it in by a certain date. And most people aren't aware of you know, the, the, the bylaws and such. So honestly, I'm going for, to try to find the best possible candidate. We have not had a chance as a group to even talk to my, Mr. LaRouche. And if there's an opportunity to speak to him and weigh the, weigh the capabilities and such and go for the best candidate, I think we should. It, it, you would do that in a regular job situation. So all I would ask that tonight is that while you are ready to make a decision, give Mr. LaRouche the same opportunity to go through an awareness process, creating an awareness process with this board. And perhaps that will help weigh your decision with regard to you moving ahead. Because there might be some other people who are really good as well. And honestly, I would love to see if, you know, if Jeff gets it, that's great. I, I really, I, and I'm with Todd in terms of Jeff, he handled everything with us and we did give you a we, we worked it pretty hard. We did. But I think that we need to be not cutting it off just yet. And I think that uh, I know I know of one of the member who was surprised that we're in the kind of a rush to get this done. Um, and so therefore, I would ask that the board give Michael a chance to speak and weigh that against potential that the, those skills and somebody else that might hold it open another week. All I know is that when you join the Conservation Commission, you know, there is, a, and it's like your job, Tom, and, and the rest of you members. You know, it, it's every other Saturday, your, your Saturday morning shot the hell. And those site visits are extremely important. Okay. It's every other Wednesday. And you go from 7 to 11 o'clock at night half the time, sometimes midnight. And then at the same time, like yourselves, you all do a pile of homework beforehand. And I want anybody that joins this group to under, fully understand you're going to drop a good 20 hours, 25 hours in a month to, to make this thing work and work well, if you're really doing the job. And uh, that's what we need. And, and honestly, uh, both of you candidates need to ask yourself, can I really put that kind of time in and become as versed as you possibly can in the science, as well as the legality that goes along with this? This is a ton of work, folks. So, at the end, I would ask that the, uh, the board give Michael a chance to share his background. And I would hope that you would, if, if at the end of this, you would at least consider him for an adjunct member. That we might. And thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Mr. Jeffries. Yeah, I just want to um, appreciate Mr. Rabbit's comments there. Um, but also to ask you, Mr. Chair, um, just in terms of process, we seem to have a majority of members and I think all of us are in favor of moving forward. So what are the, what are the next steps uh, for this process uh, if, to, uh, to make an appointment? Yeah, I think, I think the, the majority of the board has spoken. I think we are ready to vote. I mean, notwithstanding other comments, I think that to the, to the, the comment of, of Ms. LaRouche applying for uh, an a, a associate member, does not, that's fine with me. And we can entertain uh, an, an appointment with him and interview with him at uh, a later date, whether it's next week or, or in the next few months to do that and appoint him to uh, an associate member. So that that's really not uh, conflicting with the current appointment and the current interviewee tonight. But I think the board has spoken that they, they want to go ahead with this, with this appointment uh, as it followed all the rules uh, that we could. And yes, there was always a rolling opportunity to have other, uh, other members come in, but this was properly done. And I think Mr. Viviano has shown uh, the commitment and the, 
dedication that is needed in this job. So I would entertain a motion. Well, uh, I, before I entertain a motion, Ms. Adams, Anna Mute. Yes, I was going to make a motion. So if that's the direction you're heading in, um, wanted to reiterate, I always like when there's more than one candidate for something, but I also think if there's a process and, and it's spelled out, that we have to follow that or, or we can't make sense of anything. And so I would like to make an emotion. I would like to make a motion to appoint uh, Jeffrey Viviano of 338 Sunset Lane to the Conservation Commission term to expire June 30th, 2020. I have a second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All, uh, those in All those in favor, roll call. Ms. Adams. Aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And an aye for me. Congratulations, Mr. Viviano. You should go and see the town clerk and be sworn in before the Conservation Commission's Next meeting, uh, the chair of the Conservation Commission will let you know when that schedule is, and I believe he wants to say something. So, Mr. Pease. I just wanted to point out that associate membership, as Ms. Ms. Adams said the last time this came up, is not a real thing. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an informal, Thing where someone who's expressed interest, they attend meetings um, and they participate in discussions at the meeting. They, they can come to site walks if they want and they participate in discussions up until the point where a motion is made. Um, you know, they don't, because they're not a voting member, they don't participate, you know, after the motions are made. Um, and so, you know, if Mr. LaRouche wants to become an associate member, you know, this, it's usually it, it just happens organically. You know, they come to the Conservation Commission and they say they want to become an associate member and they keep coming and, and, and they are. So um, I, I'm not sure there's anything the selectmen have to do or should do like to appoint Mr. LaRouche because it's not in the town charter. It, it's not in uh, Massachusetts law or anything else like that. that. That's the only thing I wanted to say. Okay. So I would encourage Mr. LaRouche to do that. If you are interested to uh, meet with the uh, Conservation Commission, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Pease, if you would, uh, if you haven't already gotten Mr. LaRouche's email and email him the agenda so he has the ability to come and attend in such a manner. Mr. LaRouche and I spoke earlier today. Um, uh, I was the one that encouraged him to, to uh, you know, tune into tonight's meeting. Um, and uh, I certainly will email him the next agenda. Ms. LaRouche, before we end this subject, I will give you the opportunity, if you would like to say something, if you would not, that's fine too, but if you would like, uh, let me know. Would you? He's muted. I'm trying to unmute him. Oh, okay. If he wants to speak, I will, there you go. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to at least participate. Um, you know, I understand completely uh, about the uh, process that uh, you are going through. And um, I certainly have no issues with that whatsoever. Um, I am interested in being, um, an, what, what do you call it, an associate, associate. associate member? I'm certainly interested in um, the wetlands. Um, I mean, my small bio, bio is such that I, at a young age, I hiked the Appalachian Trail. So at a very young age, I became aware of how important our environment is and how important that trail uh, opened up not only my mind to the wilderness and nature, but to many other people. So I come from, a, uh, at a very young age, knowing how important uh, our environment is and how to conserve uh, our, our wetlands as well as our rivers. And so for that, I am in tune with um, your, um, the laws that govern um, every town. And I'm also a beekeeper. I've been a beekeeper for 40 years. So I'm certainly for pollinating 
uh, flowers and trees and understand the impact that has on everyone's lives. And um, been here since uh, 1976 um, as a member or as a citizen of Lunenburg. Um, recently became uh, a North Country Land Trust member, uh, being very appreciative of the trails that are near my home, uh, brought up my children in this wonderful town, um, was their softball coaches um, growing up here in Lunenburg. So um, even though I wasn't born here, I certainly have an affinity for this wonderful town. And uh, the good news is my kids still like coming back to visit. So even though they've moved away, they still appreciate the fact that we gave them a great um, um, background here in Lunenburg. So uh, with that, I thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about myself and certainly look forward to uh, being an associate uh, member of the Conservation Commission. And I'll try to make the meetings and the walkthroughs as I can. I am retired so that gives me a lot of time uh, to uh, give back to my community, which I hope to do. Thank we you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your uh, stepping forward too. And uh, I'm sure we will see you back in front. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me just do some housekeeping here. Uh, while we do, we have something, Madam Town Manager, for the Conservation Commission with some do of the warrant. Do we have someone here tonight for the conservation? Oh, no, do we have something to discuss with them about some of the special yeah. town meeting warrants. So while we still have them here, uh, why don't we uh, address that? Okay, and Chairman Pease can cover this, but. There are two articles that the Conservation Commission submitted for transferring care, custody, and control of, one being 111 Malpas Road Rear and the other 970 Northwest Townsend Road Rear. And there in your Google Drive are the related documents with graphics um, depicting where those properties are located. And okay. I don't know you would like Ms. the chairman and the Conservation Commission to I am speak unmuted. again on why they would like those. Mr. Pease, you have the floor to talk to us about these two properties. Uh, they're both relatively small properties. Uh, the one in the middle of uh, Northwest uh, Town Forest is totally surrounded by conservation land. Um, and it is all, it is critical habitat. You know, it's identified by critical habitat, wildlife habitat by uh, the DEP. Um, and uh, was a, in, uh, acquired through tax title. Um, and the other uh, land is surrounded on three sides by the small town forest. Um, it is actually uh, owner unknown property, which therefore is assigned to uh, the town of Lunenburg. Um, and I think I said last time I spoke with Adam Koss about this probably a year ago, and he said, well, it could be under the, you know, even though our, 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 the title is, is uncertain, you know, it can be the title uncertain under the care and control of the selectmen, or it can be un, under the title uncertain under the care and control of the Conservation Commission. You know, it doesn't really make any difference uh, and so again, it's also a critical habitat, totally surrounded. Well, not totally surrounded, it's surrounded on three sides uh, by conservation land. And then there's a small piece of uh, abutting private land. And then it, uh, again, on, beyond that is, is more conservation land. So to me, they both make eminent sense and I'd be happy to answer any questions. So I think with the board discussed this a little bit last week that, uh, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I believe the consensus was that these really made, as the chair just said, the chair of the Conservation Commission just said, make logical sense. They're small pieces that are 
uh, adjacent to and abut in various degrees existing town forest and to make them part and parcel with those just makes imminent sense. Mr. Jeffries. Yep. So Mr. Pease, uh, my question is, is straightforward. So there's um, these two articles, there's, there's a concern that was vocalized last week by the town manager about the length of uh, the special town meeting. And I share that concern uh, that given the pandemic that you know, if the Warren articles are too long, that that may deter some people from participating. Um, so real quick, uh, is there a benefit to this being on the special town um, meeting, um, to, for this being decided at the special town meeting, or is this something that um, can wait until uh, the spring? Well, certainly it could wait. I would, I would hope it would be done at the special town meeting. Um, I mean, but that's up to the board of selectmen, you know, that, you know, certainly, I mean, it hasn't ha never happened before. Um, you know, there's I guess I'm asking what the benefit is, what the benefit is of doing this now versus in six months. The benefit is that it, it's, it's completed. Uh, I've seen so many times in uh, government, you know, you say you're going to do something later and, and, and it doesn't happen because, you know, uh, other things get in the way, but. You know, I, I leave that to the Board of Selectmen. Okay, thank you. Ms. Adams. Um, I think what was just uh, vocalized makes sense. That's my question too. The town manager had recommended we, I guess the open space is in the process of looking at a lot of parcels for a similar purpose to you know, make them contiguous with where they should be or sell them or, you know, I'd like to learn more about what they're doing and what their charge is, but that's another story. But in, in looking at it as a, a, an entire project, I think it would be better to bring them um, to town meeting um, together or with an ex a bigger explanation or a bigger sense of purpose. Um, these two parcels, it makes sense um, what's being recommended here. Um, but as I said last week, these Warren articles were made at a meeting of which there was no agenda topic to, um, to um, have them be discussed. And so I had questioned whether or not they were valid Warren articles because there was no agenda to create them. Um, so I think it's best to wait the spring for a variety of reasons. Mr. Pease. Uh, I would just, uh, we heard uh, Mrs. Adams uh, remarks at the last meeting and so we, uh, reaffirmed the vote and they were prominently posted on the agenda with the full um, with the full uh, ad addresses uh, at our last meeting and the vote was reaffirmed. When, when the vote was reaffir reaffirmed, the um, warrant had already been closed. So that was not possible to do that. Um, although you added it to the agenda to try to create um, a legitimate warrant article. It was after the warrant was closed. And so that's also not valid. I disagree with that interpretation. We get to decide what's on it. So uh, well, they, they have to be made before the warrant is closed, Tom. I guess I would pose my question to the town manager. Can we or citizens make warrant articles after the opportunity to do so is closed? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead, Madam Town Manager. What we have done is put, if we know there's gonna be an article that needs um, to be drafted to put a placeholder as a board, if that goes on um, in place before the warrant closes. And we did not make a placeholder, correct? Correct. Okay. We did not so or we not did? I'm not trying to be crazy. I just love open meeting law and um, you have to post something to, on an agenda to do it and you also have to do it within the correct time period and to redo something after the fact because you did it without it being on an agenda when the time period has passed doesn't make it valid and for something that I don't see as um, time sensitive we can accomplish it in the spring I prefer we just do it with the correct open meeting law being followed. It's just good process, regardless of the topic. Was this on last week's, Madam Town Manager, was this on last week's special town meeting warrant articles that you had presented to us? On the draft uh, special town meeting warrant? Yes. 
Okay. So it was on there. It was on the draft. I think what Selectman Adams is saying, was it um, drafted in, in before the warrant closed originally? Well, you would know because you, hand, you handle the special town meeting warrant. Was yes. it submitted before it closed or not? The Conservation Commission chair submitted um, a letter with the two warrant articles before the warrant closed. So for the purposes of the special town meeting warrant, were they submitted before they closed? Yes, the chairman of the Conservation Commission submitted those two articles before the warrant closed, yes. Okay, and do they have to have been voted by the board before the warrant closes if on an open meeting law? If they're submitted- or can, they put one, or can they put it on there with the intent that they will have what on an open meeting before the actual town meeting? If they're submitted by a board or commission, there, I mean, it would be the board voting to put it forth versus say the finance director as a one public official submitting an article. So, so I, all right. maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm being inadvertently obtuse. So in your opinion, were these two articles submitted properly for us to be discussing this before the warrant closed or not? The process, as far as the submittal, followed the correct process. Yes, they were submitted before. I'm not going to comment on whether it was an open meeting law violation. That's not for me to determine. It would be the attorney general to make that determination. Right. But if they, if they put it on there and subsequent to that, but before the town meeting, subsequent to the close, they put a placeholder. Yes. And then they have a meeting where they affirm it as a commission at an open meeting before the warrants even printed. That seems to me a valid process. I don't see there's anything against the open meeting that would, that would make them not valid as warrant article. I, I will I'll allow other people to speak, but that's my personal Mr. opinion. Mr. Chair, if I may. Well, hold on. There are other people. Part of the discussion. I just want to, I feel like we need to cycle back to my point because I feel like we're not discussing what my point was. And so it's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cycle back to you out of courtesy, uh, but I get to ask who speaks next. So go ahead. Are you inviting me to speak? Yes. Okay. So. My point is very simple and it's getting very clouded. And I think the town manager is evident in the fact she wouldn't comment on whether or not there was an open meeting law violation. That was my primary and only point. Everything else beyond that doesn't need to be discussed. I watched a conservation commission meeting um, in its entirety. I was following the lettuce farm and 250 Howard and a variety of other things that were you know, part of our agendas as well. At the very end of that meeting on their agenda, it was just the two words, warrant articles, as is common before a town meeting to list that so you can discuss the warrant articles, right? It's on the agenda. They made a warrant article. It was presented by Matt Morrow, um, this warrant article of land in the care, custody of control of selectmen, the 970 and the 111. And I was, I had my audio and video off and was just listening, doing dishes. And I'm like, land in the care, custody of control of selectmen, warrant articles, parcels I haven't heard of at our meetings. And so immediately I just started to like look up the parcels and try to figure out what I missed because I felt that, okay, I'm uninformed. That's my responsibility to become informed. And at that meeting, they made a motion to make warrant articles on two pieces of property that weren't on their agenda that night. I really like open meeting law because it really helps with communication and openness, the feeling that people are involved, the feeling that people aren't surprised or blindsided. I was blindsided as a guest watching that meeting that property in the care, custody and control of selectmen was being voted on to be given to the conservation by conservation through a warrant article made that was not on their agenda. To discuss a topic, to make a warrant article, it needs to be on the agenda so that if you wanted to come participate, comment, public comment, um, 
project ideas. You need to know it was going to be occurring. That's just common courtesy and the law. So the night of the meeting, and I think it was September 21st, that the warrant article was created. It was not on the agenda. And so I commented at the end, I'm, I'm surprised you made a warrant article because this topic wasn't on your agenda. And the fact that at a, a meeting, a next meeting, they decided to redo it just in case they did it wrong, proves that there was a, a, some uncertainty on their part, except the warrant had closed. That's just the story. It's just the story of the law. Michael Wright, Mr. Jeffries, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate certainly what, what Ms. Adams' contribution is here. I, I, it seems as if, um, you know, we're being asked to consider whether an open meeting law violation occurred uh, that would then preclude this article from being considered. And, uh, and I think that there's two parts to that. The first being uh, an agenda topic of warrant articles suggests to me just that. Um, perhaps they should be more specific in their language, but I, I don't know what else is to, is to be discussed under an agenda topic titled warrant articles, if not warrant articles. Um, and so it would seem to follow that if during that time they discussed warrant articles and created, um, proposed some warrant articles, that that would be fall within the language of the um, of their agenda. But nonetheless, you know, as to me, it's not clear and apparent and, and, you know, that that occurred. But the other, the other part of this is that, you know, I, I, I think I brought this up last week, which is I have a general question about boards that essentially that, that um, are appointed by us, whether or not they then have to um, go back to us to submit articles for the, um, excuse me, submit articles for approval for town meeting. And as I looked into that answer, I think, you know, what occurred to me is that there's many boards that we appoint um, and that, you know, all articles come before this board for review. Right. And just so I'm clear, Madam Town Manager, if, if I can just ask this question, certainly to you as well, Mr. Chair, based on your experience, have there been occasions um, in which an article was submitted prior to an article closing and then a board or commission came back and said, I have a revision uh, that was then accepted? Well, I would say that many times articles are put forward, but before they're printed, they get revised as far as the language. So that happens all the time. Yes. Okay. It goes through legal review and any language changes that are made by a legal counsel. So that's my recollection as well. So it would just, it, it, it would seem to follow for me at least tonight that uh, I don't question the legality of the article that was presented by the Conservation Commission, you know, I, I, I will agree that their topic was broad, um, but I don't in and of itself consider that to be a violation. Mr. Pease. Uh, I just wanted to add that back in February, um, the Conservation Commission uh, went through all of the uh, town owned uh, parcels that are uh, under the care and control of the Board of Selectmen. And we reviewed all of them. And uh, I think it was, I think there was five parcels they picked out and they authorized me uh, to come to the Board of Selectmen and request, uh, you know, their transfer to the Conservation Commission. Uh, but at the time I said, I'm not gonna do that until uh, I've had a chance to, uh, you know, re get an endorsement from the open space committee. And after speaking with uh, the open space uh, committee, um, you know, the open space committee endorsed two parcels, uh, basically because that I only asked them to endorse two parcels but because of this broader review that's gonna be taking place. And so those two parcels then were brought, brought forward uh, to the board of selectmen. And I wish we'd have had the time uh, you know, to take and come to this board of selectmen, you know, long before the town meeting to have a discussion about it. But, you know, the timeline uh, didn't allow that. So I just want to point out that this was initiated way back in February, and I was re uh, fully authorized, you know, to approach the board of selectmen way back in February. Mr. P, is at your meeting on Wednesday where you did have these specifically on the Warren article, did, excuse me, did, was, was the vote unanimous? The vote was unanimous and everyone who was there 
felt that the vote was unnecessary, but it was a uh, suspenders and belt approach. Wow, that's a very UK term. That's a, uh, yeah. wow. Well, where's Wilford Railroad when you need him? You know, it's like- Brimley, yeah. Wilford Brimley, yeah. Uh, Ms. Adams. Oh, hold on. No, I just want to say that the, the articles make sense to me. And, you know, I just become uh, very, very, um, there's no better word than I become a nerd when I'm working on a topic. I studied open meeting law for the past four years, but it started as a citizen um, when I pointed out a violation of the town. And I had to learn about it in order to process it. And ultimately the attorney general sided with me and it was a lot of work, it was very stressful, but I, I, I taught myself the law while I did it because I wanted to be certain I was doing the right thing. And, and it, it really didn't, it really doesn't do much to follow something through to the attorney general office um, because then the town's just told they violated it and that's it. <laughs> and I knew that anyways, but I learned a lot in the process. And so I think what's missing here is for example, with an agenda, you can't say warrant article because therefore you could just say town of Lunenburg on an agenda. And then you can discuss anything in the town of Lunenburg forever and ever because everything is about the town of Lunenburg. So the intent of the law is to be specific enough that everybody understands exactly what's being discussed. So you can't use generic words that's not accepted in the law. And in terms of taking the vote at last Wednesday's, that's arbitrary because the warrant was closed. And so it just goes back to the night it happened. Even it, it's just splitting hairs at this point, but I think we need to do a better job. We talk about communicating as a town and the best way to communicate is to have a good and open agenda. The fact that I was surprised that night of land being discussed that's in the care, custody and control of the selectmen, they've been discussing it since February. I didn't know that. Our board didn't discuss it. Why weren't we a part of it since February? We didn't ask for the Conservation Commission to do it. They didn't tell me they were doing it. Maybe they told the town manager. So there's just something in the situation that to me raised a red flag, one that I felt open meeting law was violated. I'm not going to follow it through to the Attorney General's office because if I'm right, that's all they'll say is you're right. And nothing will change. Um, and so my point here, I guess, in, in making an issue of this is that if things aren't known about, especially by the people who should know about them, it makes me uncomfortable. I think that um, open meeting law and clear agendas help with communication. I think just being aware helps with communicating. There's something strange here that there's something involving the Board of Selectmen that we didn't know about. So I guess these two properties may not be important, but something similar happened with a Gilchrist Street property where there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of upset of butters, a lot of confusion. And so I'm just, I guess, speaking on behalf of a pattern of wanting to be sure I clearly understand more in articles, where they're coming from and why, because there's a history here. It's not just a random thing. I would say that it is coming to the Board of Selectmen. We, it is in front of us now. We have the ability to strike it if we choose. Very retroactively. I like proactive communication. It feels better. I don't think they didn't follow the process properly as far as warrant article submissions. I don't think there's any requirement that a board take a vote on something before the warrant article is closed. I think they could take it after. I don't think there's any requirement in open meeting law about when you can submit and who can submit that article on behalf. Now, if the commission had said it as a placeholder, and that's why I asked the chair of the conservation commission, if it was unanimous, if it had failed, then this would be an easy vote. We were like, if you don't even agree on it yourself, then we're not gonna do it. So we totally have free reign here in, this, in determining this before any decision, as there's two decisions to be made. First of all, do we put it on? Or, and then there's the town meeting decision that the town gets to put it on as well. So uh, I don't see any, I don't see the violation that you're talking about as far as the warrant article submission. Anyway, that being said, the town manager did last week say to shorten it. And I, in response, I think these are not going to cause any great discussion and add to the length of this meeting in any regard. I cannot see, fathom anybody standing up saying, 
I want to save or I want to discuss for an hour some back property of, you know, the New West Townsend Road one or, or uh, you know, the two, the two that are in the Mulpus Road or the, yeah, the New West Townsend Road. I mean, I just don't see it happening. So if we do it now or we do we spend the 10 minutes now or 10 minutes later, spe- the annual town meeting gets lots of Warren articles and people always want to get it out. And God forbid it be a nice Saturday in May, then everybody wants to get out by three o'clock. So we might as well, I don't see why we wouldn't just take a vote on it. They seem to be straightforward articles. Anybody else on the board have any discussion about putting these on or taking them off the wire? I I don't. We've wasted enough time with this. Let's move it. All right. Uh, I don't and it's in a motion on that then. Well, I'll make the motion that we put the articles on the warrant. They already on the warrant. Well, we, we, since we're discussing, well, I, I wanted to be clear what we've decided. So there's. Well, no, I don't know. What do you? What is it? Somebody else make a motion. Yeah, no. The warrant is closed. I don't even know what motion we'd be making. We could remove it. Okay. That, that's the motion that could be made, but he's saying to leave it. So we're proactively asking the motion by Mr. Marino, if he wants to go forward with it, is to leave it remain. The two articles remain on the special town meeting warrant. So do I, do you want to still make that motion, Mr. Marino? Yes, I do. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? I just want to be clear that this is a reaffirmation that we're all of, of keeping these articles on the wire. Yes, board. that's what we're doing. We're keeping them on the wire. Thank you. All right, seeing nobody's hand up. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Ms. Adams. I'll just go with a no. And I for me. Okay, so that was what we wanted to talk about with the Conservation Commission. I also am curious that they did call their meeting to order and don't have a quorum, but those are just other details of the open meeting law. Aren't I a pain? <laughs> but they didn't vote on anything. They, they're members. No, they're I here. know, but they're here. They're having discussion. And, and when you, they're part of our deliberation, technically. Um, it's, it's a fine line. <clears throat> As you wish. Uh, all right. Thing. Okay, so next, review the special town meeting warrant articles, uh, including the FY 2021 budget discussion. We already did the discussion with the Conservation Commission. So let's go through, Madam Town Manager, I think you want to share. Share yep. the screen, yes, please. Yeah. <sighs> Our manager is going to share her screen so she can. I'm going to start off. Um, so article A right now, they're not still lettered until the board finalizes the warrant. Um, and then they'll be numbered appropriately. Article A is the uh, budget article to amend the fiscal 21 budget. So I'm going to pull up the um adjustments sheet. Can everyone see is this likely to is this likely to change? Yes. So, okay. so we can't, give so we can't every... vote. Right. So we're not going to vote on supporting it or not because we don't know the final number. Correct. Okay. So let's just yeah. we'll just you you presented this to the FinCom, correct? Yes. And since then there have been a couple updates as well. Okay. Um, so um, I did update the board last week about the change to new growth, that there's additional new growth revenue and the new estimate is 308. And it's not an estimate, it's an actual because it was certified, uh, 308,732. Moving down to on the expenditure side, I'll just go over um, line items that are new. I just added, um, for the additional police officer and firefighter, 
regarding the health insurance because those two numbers do not include the health insurance. Um, but there are two vacant DPW positions. So I'm not asking to make an, any amendment regarding health insurance because we'd have sufficient funds in our health insurance line item to cover if those two new employees took health insurance. The um, estimates for the additional cost for PPE, additional cleaning costs and IT cost for the remainder of the fiscal year, January through July are included. And the IT cost, that is the um, town's portion of the remote meeting coordinator position. The deferred fiscal 21 capital projects, um, the couple of things I wanted to talk to the board about that, and that's a, another article as well, but now's a good time to go over that is there um, is a cruiser on that list of deferred projects, but it was for the replacement of the canine cruiser. But that vehicle is, um, it's a Tahoe, that would be the canine cruiser, it does not come in a hybrid version. And we received green communities grant funds. And part of that was $5,000 towards a hybrid cruiser. So if we switched out the cruiser, one of the cruisers that needs to be replaced in fiscal 22, um, instead of the canine cruiser swap, swap places with those two cruisers, we would save $5,000 on that purchase. So that total um, could come down an uh, additional $5,000. And it also will um, still working out unexpended capital, um, but it looks like an additional 6,000 in unexpended capital. So that would further reduce that capital plan project number by that amount as well, because we'd offset by those, uh, that $6,000. The um, stabilization fund, that number right now is under review until there's uh, a final figure from the streetlights LED article and whether that will stay on the warrant. The special purpose stabilization fund, I'm recommending to deposit $250,000 into that fund. And primarily I'm basing that on that there's approximately $500,000 in requests for vehicles and equipment in fiscal 22. So this could help offset that cost when those projects um, if they're proposed to be funded in fiscal 22, it could, that could be a supplemental source for funding for those projects. And today um, we found a payment of a prior year bill in the amount of $150 that will have to be acted upon at the special town meeting. Okay. Any questions? Just a comment. No, I I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very for, I like the, the change of the police, the canine vehicle and swapping out with a regular one so we can use those grant monies, the green community grant money. That makes sense to me. I, I have a comment on that, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Moreno. Through you to the town manager. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that car that's in the queue that we bought in July, is also subject to the five thousand dollar discount. Yes. Once we, we, yeah. So it's a, so essentially we're getting ten thousand. Right. right. Okay. Yes. Want to make that point? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Any well, other questions about this this screen? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So I will go back to the warrant. Article B, we just discussed the capital deferred capital plan projects. Article C is the for the payment of the prior years for the right now is $150. Article D is for the regular stabilization fund. So until we have final uh, figures 
regarding the streetlights article uh, that will determine a recommendation on the, the stabilization fund. Let me, um, let me but, interrupt you here and ask, mm -hmm. when is this going to print? The board has to sign next Tuesday. Okay, you know? so we want to sign recommendations. How are we going to have numbers on these? I mean, I have asked, um, so the chairman of the Green Communities uh, Task Force could not be present tonight. And I have asked for a updated, if, if it has changed from the town meeting number for the streetlights article. But how about all the other numbers that we're looking at? I mean, are they, we want to be able to vote on whether we recommend approval or not on these for the yeah. publication. I'll finalize everything on for the, the capital plan um, numbers. And okay. that would be the only change known at this time. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. No. The special purpose stabilization fund um, E is the uh, recommended amount of $250, $250,000 to deposit into the special purpose stabilization fund to supplement. Um, that fund was established for vehicles and equipment. The article F uh, is 150, 110, I'm sorry, thousand into the OPEB trust fund article. And that is based on our policy of depositing 10% of the prior year's certified free cash into that fund. Article G and Article H still need to be voted by the board officially. And so those won't affect the operating budget as we have a, an account, a salary reserve account that those would be transferred out of. Article I is the PEG access uh, capital line article. So this was deferred into this town meeting as they didn't have sufficient funds in their retained, from their retained earnings to fund this. And that's 120,000. Article J is uh, the sewer reserve capacity stabilization fund. Uh, they're requesting to transfer $68,097.59 into that stabilization fund. Article K is for uh, premiums reserved for capital um, from the bonds that were issued in the spring. Article L is to add the positions of intermittent heavy equipment operator and principal assessor to the comp and class plan in the salary administration bylaw, and those were previously approved by the personnel committee. Article M and Article N have to do with 250 Howard Street, uh, specifically the exercising the first right of refusal for 250 Howard Street, and N is regard includes the donation of acquiring that a piece you know of where we are. Do we know where we are on that? Has town council given us any indication about the progress? I emailed with town council yesterday and last week regarding this, and he has been in touch with the seller's attorney and discussed a tri-party agreement. Okay, so it's moving you. forward. I've also been contacted by the owner of the property and the purchaser. Um, a couple times since last meeting to give updates. Article O is uh, the TIF agreement article, the tax increment financing agreement article for Bright Farms at the property at 361 Mass Ave. And that's on your agenda um, next. Article P is to hear a report from the TC Building Design Committee. Article Q is 111 Mulpus Road Rear that was just discussed. Article R is 970 Northwest Townsend Road Rear that was just discussed with conservation. Article S is the conversion of the town's streetlights to LED fixtures. 
And Article T is the Planning Board's article on changes to the stormwater bylaw. Is that the last one? That is the last one, and it's multi pages. So I will, <laughs> if you want me to scroll down, read, I will. Can you read that for me? <laughs> yeah, kidding. You want to be here till ten o'clock? <laughs> no. So, so is there any is there anything that we can vote on tonight, or do we want to just vote on our recommendations on this next week when we have all the data that we're going to have before it has to go into the the public out to publication? If you want to wait till after the finance committees, they have their public hearing this Thursday. There, um, David Blatt has been asked to attend that meeting as well. And so, but that's the preference of the board, whichever. Well, if there's going to be things that are changing, I mean, obviously we can't do anything on our recommendations in the publication after it has to go to publication. So next Tuesday is the only chance we have as the last meeting, which I'm fine if we want to do it then and wait for all those changes. Uh, you is want that to the, them as a the will of the board? Of, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, I, unless somebody, please, members of the board, if you have, if you want to take some of these now, let me know. If you want to wait till next week, let me know. Uh, question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Marino. We have to vote on each one individually. Is that correct? Well, I mean, we can, if we want, we can group them together. But yes, you can vote on them individually, too. If you, Some of them are just, you know, we could do it as ever we want. There's no specific process. Yeah, Mr. Chair? Yes? I'm in favor of us going through these today and figuring out which ones we can vote on and voting on them with recommendations if possible. And then next week, uh, working on the uh, um, consent calendar. Right. Okay. Well, let's go down the line, Mr. Dwyer. Now or next week? Let's do it now, Mr. Marino. Now, Ms. Adams. Okay. Uh, does up mean now? Okay. Uh, all right. So let's go through them now. Well, we can't do A because we don't have a final number. But B, we do have a final number, correct? You have the capital plan? Those, I will have um, the other sources of funds that we'll be able to use to allocate towards the capital, finalized for next week. But those okay. projects- so, we that don't, so that's not finalized either? No. Okay. So C, we have $150. Is there likely to be any other prior expense dug out of some closet? with somebody's I, coat jacket knock on wood i don't anticipate any all right so let's other. let's put in the 150 dollars here so i would entertain a motion on article c about the probably 150 dollars for a prior year expense and you don't have to bother raising your hand if uh, and madam town manager if you can unmute miss adams as you're the host here unless you want to give me back the host ship no, no, you, you, we needed to see things. So Sorry, I can't, I can't you see. You just unmute Ms. Adams. Sorry. Can't see everyone. <laughs> if you go on the participants. It, she, she thought it. I just want to say that I don't have to keep muting if you don't hear any background noise. I'm just afraid that there may be, you know, noises that are interrupting things. But if people don't sense any feedback coming from me, then I, I'll stay unmuted. <laughs> No, I haven't heard anything that okay. was disruptive, no. That's good. <laughs> okay, so entertain a motion on Article C for $150 prior year expenses. I move to recommend Article C. Second. All right. I'm going to say that if you want to discuss it, then discuss. I'm not going to do this. I want to get through these, so I'm just going to, if you have something to discuss, just say it. Otherwise, roll call. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. Aye for me. D, uh, we don't have a stabilization fund number, right? Because that's what you were waiting for the lights. Right. The treatments. Okay. But for special purpose stabilization, you said $250,000. Is that correct? That's my recommendation. Okay. So to see, 
So to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of money to put in the special purpose specialization fund, $250,000. I would entertain a motion on that article. I move to recommend article E. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. And I for me. Uh, $110,000 to put in OPEB trust fund. Article F, I move to recommend Article F, which puts $110,000 in the OPEB trust fund. I have a second. Second. Okay, I have a question. Is this a requirement? Do we have to make this payment at some point this year? It's not a requirement. It's part of our financial policies about right. depositing money and as well as it looks favorably when we go out for bonding. Yes, and at the, at the annual town meeting, do we have the ability to readjust the previous budget year? So next May, will we be able to do something with this budget or is this the last opportunity? With the OPEB trust fund? Or just with the budget in general. Amendments my, point being, budget my point being, if we, don't, if we don't know what this financial situation is gonna be, and this is just putting money in a bank account somewhere, I understand the use of it in getting bond ratings and, and how it's looked upon, but I also don't want to tie up money that we don't necessarily want to tie up unless we absolutely know that we have enough to cover. That's all. Yeah, we would be, there's always an article on the annual as well to make any budget adjustments to the current fiscal year as well. Right. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So. So we have a Warren article, a, a motion to approve this at $110,000. And we have a second. So Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. And uh, muted. Okay, I'm gonna say no for me because I think we should wait until the, to the spring. <clears throat> so four to one. G, we don't have the contract for the firefighters. Uh, H, we don't have the final contract for the municipal employees. So let's go down the line to I. Can we scroll to I or is it my screen that's, oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying okay. to monitor the participant list and so this is for uh, public access cable related fund, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. This is basically so they can operate operate pack or you know, the the public access cable, right? Yes, it goes towards yep the capital purchases that they make. So I would entertain a motion on I. I move to recommend article I uh, to move $120,000 to the capital line for peg access and cable enterprise. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. And an aye for me. Okay, Jay is transferring from available funds $68,097.59 into the Reserve Capacity Stabilization Fund. I would entertain a motion on Jay. Uh, I have a question on Jay first. Go ahead. Um, can we just ask the town manager just to clarify um, what the Reserve Capacity Stabilization Fund does? Just remind me of that. Um, I believe it's there to, um, like a sort of stabilization fund to offset future liabilities, but I would have to, um, go back to the original, um, when it was created to find that. All right. I, I'm in favor of postponing J till next week. Any objections to postponing this till next week when we get an explanation? of what the reserve capacity stable, a reminder, I should say, 
of what the reserve capacity stabilization fund is for? Not for me. All right, hearing none. All right, Kay. So this is just a refinancing of bonds. Is that correct? Yes. So the when we went out to bond, it created a um, reserve uh, premium reserved from the bond issuance. So ah, okay. So this is the application of that toward the loan. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. I'm time. sorry. Reserve for future capital, not for it to reduce the amount of. Are we, are we back? Did you did you skip back to Jay, inadvertently no. here? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. I got it. All right. So it's going to be used for future capital. Okay. And I move to recommend Article K, uh, which would put one point six. Uh, $1,695,000 general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2020 bonds uh, to pay costs of projected finances financed by such bond. Okay. okay. All those in favor, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. And I for me. Okay. We're. Oops. Let's go to, wow. We skipped the page. <laughs> yeah, faster, yeah, faster than even I could go here. So uh, L is putting those new entries for intermittent, uh, intermittent heavy equipment operator and principal assessor into the salary admin yeah. plan. I move to recommend article L. Uh, what second. Okay. All right, I'll second it, uh, just to get this going. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Okay. And aye for me. Uh, let the record show that Ms. Adams said, indicated aye. Uh, only because this is being recorded. So uh, then we have the two about Howard Street, but we're not going to know what to do with these. So these have to be. Uh, they're probably going to wait till town meeting, I'm guessing. So let's go to O. The TIF we haven't discussed. That's the next thing on, on our agenda here. So let's leave that till next week and we'll do it after we, well, maybe we can come back and revisit that after the presentation next. One of the two, but we can't do it right now because we don't have the numbers that we're agreeing on. P, to hear an interim report from the TC Building Design Committee. I move to approve, to recommend Article P. Second. Okay. All right, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. And she indicates yes, and I from me. Okay, then we got the two property transfers one, uh, let's take Q first. That's a 111 Mulpus Road rear and transfer it for to the Conservation Commission for conservation and passive recreation purposes. I recommend to approve Article Q. Second. Second. All right, Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Indicate votes no. And I vote aye. So four to one. Article R, same idea of transferring control of property at 970 New West Townsend Road rear from the select board to the Conservation Commission for the conservation and passive recreation purposes. Mr. Chair, I, I move to recommend Article R. Do I have a second? Okay. Second. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Ms. Adams. Indicates no. And I from me. Uh, S. Well, we don't know that till we see the presentation on the streetlights again. 
and T Stormwater. Does anybody want to take a, or do we want to listen to this or read it more? Do we want to take a vote on T or not? I'd rather wait. I agree. No, wait till town. Do we want to say we want to wait till the presentation wait. at town meeting? Wait till next, next week. week. Next, next week. week. At least next week. Okay. There we go. Mm. Okay, good head start. So now a discussion on Bright Farms Tax Increment Financing Agreement, also known as a TIF. I will I board it another asked. shared screen. Yes, <laughs> the board had asked for two projections, one on the 10 year, which I had provided last week, and secondly for an eight year agreement. So this is the the tenure that we reviewed last week and can you, sorry and can you see the eight year not yet does anybody see it? No. No. Well, it says screen sharing is paused. Hold on, I'll try to share it a different way. Oh, this works, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to log in as well, Heather, just in case? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the eight-year changes it had a um, the savings to Bright Farms. So it was a net impact, net zero impact compared to the ten-year. TIF proposal, um, but slightly more funding for the town over the um, term of the life due to the last two years receiving the full value um, in years nine and 10. Um, so I went through different versions of this because there's different ways you could project out a net impact, net zero impact to Bright Farms by changing the percentages but one that was most beneficial to the town. So I have two, uh, two comments. So the first one is I thought we were gonna add into this uh, illustration, the two, the prop two and a half increase each year. So we would see what that would be, uh, number one. And number two, there was a question that uh, was brought out either, I thought about it or somebody else said it, but whatever the reason, is that the new property tax, is that, we're just talking about property tax here or are we talking about uh, real property? I mean, or- uh, it's Only real estate, not personal property. Not personal property, okay. So right. that's, so therefore it's not gonna go down. Okay, because as somebody said, if. If, if personal property was taken into it, the appreciation, depreciation would significantly impact it, but that's not part of this. It's just real estate tax. Correct. Okay. So is there any reason why two and a half isn't in here? Um, that must have been my error. I thought I didn't see, think um, that was added, asked to be added into it. It was just a comment that it wasn't included. So I can update okay. those. But what I mean, we're looking at, I'm oh, sorry. Excuse me? I was gonna make a, have a comment or question that just to confirm that the difference between the eight year and the 10 year, even without accounting for, because I think that we were, if I'm correct, we were static on the amount for Bright Barn being the 996,600. So the question is how much the town would benefit, correct? Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and so, I mean, even even as we look at this with the eight year to the 10 year, the bottom line difference is $32,000. So 
So if we shorten this to an eight-year time period, um, Bright Barm still receives the incentives they wanted, albeit a little sooner, uh, and the town will net um, at least $32,500, and certainly more if you factor in the uh, two and a half. I mean, right. it makes sense to accelerate. If, if Bright Farms is okay with this, it obviously is in the best interest of the town to put it at eight years because then we get it back on a full tax roll sooner and they get the same exact monetary break just in a shorter period of time. So I think in the world of win-win, it makes sense. They get more money up front earlier. So if they're fine with this, I mean, we can look at the other one uh, just to refresh our memory, but. Katie. Sure. I, there's only one other time I recall um, a TIF being presented to us. Um, and I, I'm, was it ecological fibers, Heather? Yes, it was. And I believe the board voted against it. Um, I, I, if I recall it correctly, I did not. I don't think it went in favor of the company. Bringing the, the context to that is that they, you could sense how much that company was, was hoping for the TIF to be agreed upon. In this case, he overwhelmingly seemed indifferent, which makes me think that the, um, you know, I, I haven't studied the, the, the revenue of the company and, and its other, you know, and operations and whatnot, but they did not, he did not seem the least bit concerned about adapting it, changing it or tweaking it. Um, so I think, however, it heads in the benefit um, of the town, if he was amenable to it, I, I, would, I would think that we should, do, you know, follow, follow that. Does that make sure. sense? Sure. Like he just so quickly said, sure, that would be fine, longer, shorter. And so I, I, I think any company is prudent to look for um, tax incentives, but I, I didn't, it, 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 this, this process, the only other time we had one of these since I've been a member, it, it felt, he felt very indifferent. So I think what, whatever makes most sense to um, bringing in the most to the town in, in, in the least amount of time would make sense. And if I remember, I wasn't a member of the board, but if I remember the ecological fibers one, he was looking for a TIF like post, post fact, like he was looking for a retroactive TIF. That was part of the problem. He didn't ask it before the project. He found out that he could have asked for it after his project was done. And then the board was like, well, what did we have no incentive to do this? You've already done it. So if I remember that correctly. That is correct. Uh, Chief Marino, uh, sorry, <laughs> Selectman Marino has his hand raised. Mr. Marino. <laughs> I don't disagree, uh, but um, on the other hand, let's not chase this guy out of town. He's got a group of investors that he has to answer to as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if he's <laughs> he's going to go along with the eight-year plan, great. He's also giving us a piece of property. Let's not lose sight of that as well. No, but just, but you're absolutely right, Mr. Marino, but I want to point out that this is in his favor too, because he gets nine, $996,000 in tax breaks in eight years instead of 10. So he gets accelerated tax breaks. So there's, I don't see any, he just wanted to make sure that the number was the same, that he wasn't losing money by going to a shorter term. And I think what the town manager is showing here is that it's going to be the same tax break in a shorter period of time, which means more money early on in his pocket and his company's pocket, if I'm reading this correctly. Yes. I also took a stab at putting a written TIF agreement, just a draft together for the board, just to give you some idea of how a TIF is structured in writing. Uh, you want me to share that at this time? Sure. Okay. Let me just try to. Can everyone read it? 
All right. So this is in your Google Drive as well. This just the first clauses are our standard clauses of where the business is located, where um, their corporate location, where the development is. Um, it just um, that there be construction, what size of the facility, 310,000 square uh, feet, um, the parcel, and um, that type of, and that they're going for a local incentives only project under mass economic development. That it required um, the approval of the, the select board that would state when that vote was taken, as well as the town meeting uh, vote that approved, and that's plugged in right now, assuming that it was approved at the November special town meeting. The, this outlines the, this is the 10 year version, so it can be changed to an eight, whatever the, um, what the agreement is between Bright Farms and the board. And going further down, identifies the base valuation. So we continue to receive property taxes on the, the base valuation of the property prior to the new construction. And um, under number three, it outlines all the different obligations, um, Bright Farms. And these are ones that are typically negotiated. The number of jobs, that it would create the um, size of the investment, a $10 million investment in building and land improvements um, with the that size square footage facility, when it would be done by, and that date would need to be determined by what's reasonably anticipated by Bright, Bright Farms. That it the exemptions contained in this agreement only apply to real estate taxes and do not apply to personal property taxes, that it includes a donation of a portion of 361 Mass Ave. Um, and right now the size of the, the donation uh, that was described to me was one and a half acres of land for the Conservation Commission. That um, they would need to provide a report at the, in, by August 1st of each year outlining um, how they've uh, what jobs have been added, what um, if anyone from Lunenburg was hired, the value of their investments um, and in any other capital improvements to that would change construction costs. That um, they do also utilize diligent efforts to hire Lunenburg or other qualified businesses based out of either Worcester County or Massachusetts to construct and maintain the facility. And that they agree that they pay all their real estate taxes out on the site over the term of the agreement in a timely manner. And that we would um, be allowed to monitor and enforce the TIP agreement. Um, further, it uh, number four goes in to say that the once they reach the expected <coughs> exemption amount of 996 600 that then uh, they received no further ex exemptions that's um what i've noticed in some other tip agreements which um, seemed like a fair um, term agreement but obviously all of these would have to be negotiated with right and that the assessors would remit to them by December 31st a statement of their exemptions. So those are the main clauses. Um, a lot of this, the ending is legal, legalese. Um, that's typically in TIP agreements. Has, uh, has town council looked over this already? Town Council provided me different samples, which that's where I extracted some some terms. Um, but this version, he has not. not seen okay, it. but I mean, you've been in working in conjunction yes. with him. Um, okay. And I believe Slotman Jeffries had his hand raised. 
Mr. Jeffries. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and to the town manager. So um, I, I, it sounds as if this will be updated to reflect uh, what I think we generally are supportive tonight, which is an eight-year agreement. But I want to just, first of all, this is excellent. I think this is an excellent opening bid, opening negotiation. I, I do want to propose a change um, on on A. So right now it's to create 60 new permanent full-time jobs utilizing Lunarburg residents. In your negotiations with them, um, very interested if they're open to uh, having some part-time jobs designated for senior populations. <clears throat> I think that otherwise though, this certainly fills a lot of needs. You know, it, it guarantees funding, it guarantees permanent positions, it encourages them to hire Lunenburg businesses and businesses that maybe aren't based in Lunenburg but surrounding areas. Um, and certainly, you know, if we can get that if they're open to a, a, a revision here that creates permanent jobs and some part-time positions that uh, for senior populations, then I think that this is full circle worth the uh, million dollars. Thank you. Thank you. And I can support that request in asking them, sure. Okay, so let's go to B. Any other hands raised? Excuse me? I said, I do not see any other hands raised. Oh, no, no, no. So can we go to B? Is there anything else that we need to determine or is the rest of this? No, if there's anything please? else that you would like me to work with town council on in this agreement, let me know. Okay. So was it my understanding from the board that we would prefer to see eight years instead of 10? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's one. Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I agree with that as well, Tom, short in the term. Okay. Mr. Marino? Yeah, I agree. Ms. Adams? Yeah, I'd be fine with either one. Okay. Okay, so it looks like a majority of the board would would go with eight, but I think we don't, as Mr. Marino said, we, you know, if they, if they push back, then we can discuss, but if they're okay with it, with eight, then let's go with eight. Well, the, I guess the point I didn't make with respect to that, Mr. Chairman is, and I know what you're saying, their, their savings is going to be the same, but they're going to put more money out over that period of time than they were. And is, is that correct? 32,000? One yeah, so the, we're going to give them the same amount of money, except we're going to give it to them at eight years in breaks instead of 10. So they'll be gaining more money per year for those eight years. And, okay. we'll, net it, and we'll net 32,000 because they're going to pay in years nine and 10. Sure. And that becomes a gain of 32,000 for the town. Okay, we net 32,000. Yep. All right, yep. Never mind. Okay. Uh, let's. When are you, you're going to be running this by town council and then by Bright Farms, correct? Yes. Will, will that be run by them this week so we will be able to know their response next week? I will send this out tomorrow. So. Okay. So then we can, I mean, <clears throat> then we can vote on it. Uh, all right, so what are we up to? Number three. Uh, let's let's come back to number three. The other ones I think are going to be quicker. Temporary telework policy number four. I'm asking the board table that. Uh, okay, we're anybody against? Well, I mean, we can be against tabling it, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm assuming so. All right, so this will be tabled for a future event, a future meeting. Uh, current business requests from legislatures for fiscal priorities for FY21. Yes. So yeah, letting us know what the budget is, that would be helpful. Like <laughs> it would be great to let us know what the budget is for this, this year. Although it's almost a moot point, they should just start working on next year already. So I did. I mean, uh, everybody's I asking everybody. Well, I'm sure all municipalities are looking for the same thing. It's like, what should we expect? How do we plan? 
They're actually looking um, what we would be requesting for earmarks. So um, I put together a, a short memo uh, just outlining the projects that the board voted on last February. There were four, um, but they would like them prioritized um, one being highest priority. All right, so we have your document here. Everybody should have it in the Google Drive. So there are four listed by the town manager. 355,000 for the hazardous materials abatement and demolition of the old primary school building and feasibility and design for future use of the space. Number two, I'll list them and then we can discuss them. Number two, $127,000 for fire alarm upgrade at the Lunenburg Primary School. Number three, $180,000 for firefighting turnout gear, which would provide each firefighter two sets of gear so that after each fire gear is cleaned of hazardous materials. And four, $40,000 for the installation of new LED lighting fixtures at the library. So uh, personally, I'm fine with those four. I don't know if that's the... That's the, yeah, I thought probably would be the priority. I'd put them in too, in that order. Um, but I'm fine with that if we want to submit that. Anybody have any comments? This is my first time seeing it, Mr. Chair. Um, but my only, my only uh, thought is I had put the fire alarm upgrade at the primary school ahead of the, uh, um, the abatement at the old primary school building, but that's just me personally. Yeah, I could, I could do that. I see Ms. Adams is nodding her head. I so feel like that reads correctly. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I can, I can get behind that. So let's just, let's just switch the priority of one and two then, please. Okay. Anybody Thank else you. on anything about here? Who requested this? Uh, so Senator Tran's office and Representative Hayes' office. Did we get anything from Representative Sena's office? I'm sorry, that uh, it was um, Senator Tran and uh, Representative Sena's office, not Representative okay. Hayes' not office. Representative. I spoke to Representative Hayes' office today. Okay. okay. The amended emergency paid sick leave policy. EPSLA, as they call it. So similar to the emergency um, family medical leave act, this is the change being made is to reflect uh, what is um, corresponds to our salary administration plan and uh, other union contracts. So hit the highlights. And so on page is the only change. This is a, a red line document. It's for reasons four, five, and six of this policy, an employee may supplement one third of pay with accrued time in accordance with salary administration plan or employment contract as applicable. See, where is the there? only change? Pretty straightforward, I think. This is great. Okay. I don't have any objection to that. Do you need a vote from the board to accept that change? Yes. So I would entertain a motion from the board that we accept the new document as modified with that one sentence. So moved. We we'll have a second. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. And an aye from me. Okay. Approval of September 1st and September 8th, 2020 minutes. I'll entertain a motion on that or discussion? Motion that we approve September 8th. September, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. September 8th, minutes, motion to approve. 
uh, one at a time. Do you want to do one at September 1st as well? So, uh, yeah, sure. We'll make a motion to approve both September 1st and the 8th. Okay. I'll Thank second. You. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, let's, let's turn this around. Ms. Adams. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And I for myself. So I wanted to make sure the person is taking the minutes when they watch this, they're paying attention. Uh, also <laughs> changes the pace for me to just change the direction. Okay. Warrants. I actually did sign warrants last week. Why are they not listed here? Maybe I was, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I didn't sign warrants. Maybe I'm dreaming. While the, while the weeks of the pandemic blur into one anyway. Um, any action, item? action item? No action, action item. items? Yeah, action items. I got item. some. I have okay. something. Yep. Going back to the talent bank form, yep. um, just a suggestion uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the uh, manager. Yep. Can we make that into like a writable or a fillable PDF so we can put it on the website? I mean, if, if, if Heather, if you're willing to do something like that, I might be able to help with it. We do have that ability to create those unless you've already had it. Uh, I can see if IT can, can do it for us. And if not, I'll tap your resources. Make a suggestion. <laughs> I'll put it on. No, I think it makes all the sense in the world to do it. Absolutely. Everything. To, yeah. It's just, you know, it's keep up with the times. Everything's fillable PDFs. Then as Katie mm -hmm. suggested, maybe put, make sure all of the direction, you know, the dates or whatever you have to have it in. So there's, you know, less confusion. Uh, if if there is any, and uh, uh, and if somebody doesn't have a computer, obviously we can just print one out for them and, and fill it in. One thing that somebody did mention, and I'll I'll relay that message here, is that it probably should have a signature line, so that somebody can't submit a form for somebody else without their knowledge. I mean, I don't think it's happened, but you know, you don't want that to happen either. Somebody should be able to sign the document. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking online at our form and the spaces, are you able to type in um, and check off the different boxes um, already? And you would just have to save it, save as. Okay. All right. So it is available to do that already. Yeah. So if we just add a signature line and then they can digitally signature, sign it, that would be good too. Uh, well, I have one more question about that. Um, I sitting here in the past, in the past meetings, I've noticed that when somebody made a motion to uh, approve the application, there was a date, I guess appointment date, end date, or something. And I, I, I was looking, I couldn't find where they were getting that from. Uh, is that supposed to be on the talent form? In other words, when your term starts and begin or ends or whatever. Or, or should it be maybe? Unless um, I'm on the talent bank form. No. Yes, yeah, so I mean on the talent bank form. Mr. Chair, are you? Madam Town Manager. It would be in the uh, notice of the vacancy because every position, whether when it's appointed or when the term is expired, may be different. Um, well, okay, I just, I. Apparently, I'm not looking at the right document. I, I didn't notice any notice of appointment. Uh, and so that's that's what the problem was. So the, other, the only other thing I would suggest is, uh, based on what Jeff said tonight, uh, had, had to say tonight, maybe make those that you know portion where they put their bio in a little longer because it's kind of cramped up on that form, uh, if that's possible. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you. Just a suggestion. I'm not trying to make one more work for you. Give it to Steve or someone or Dan. <laughs> They'll do it real quick. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Any other action items? OK, 
Committee reports. I have some committee reports. Mr. Jeffries. All right. So, so yeah, just really briefly. So today the Council of Aging met this morning at 9.30, uh, went very well. It was an excellent meeting and uh, it was really good to see uh, the members uh, of the Council of Aging. Uh, there's been a pause in some meetings for a while, so it's good to see them. And uh, just to note that, you know, they, they, they did note uh, that part of the discussion today was also about their meeting schedule. Um, and they did decide that they're going to, that it's really difficult to replicate the in-person meeting um, with, the, with the population, uh, with the Zoom meetings, as well as uh, some difficulty utilizing the technology. Um, so they are going to not have another meeting until uh, right before Christmas. So that's going to come out and get published. It's going to be a little off of the regular schedule of second Tuesday of the month. Um, but that information will be forthcoming. But they did note that participation in the events at the senior, that the senior center is, is that the Eagle House is hosting um, online is, uh, is, is going great, as well as involvement and participation uh, in the um, coffee program, as well as the meal program, uh, food, food delivery, drive up food every week, uh, that, that those participation rates are also pretty high. Um, so certainly the community is very engaged with the senior population, despite, um, you know, changes uh, in services, people, there's still a heavy need out there and they, and they seem to be able to provide uh, that need. But again, you know, the real concern as always is face-to-face uh, -face contact with people and increasing socialization. So just to, to remind everyone, if you have people in your life who are above the age of 55, to make sure that you're reaching out to them often and much, you know, the best gift we can give one another is our time. Uh, so I just want to share that. Um, the other committee report is for the library trustees. So they're going to be meeting this Thursday at 645 and I'll have an update next week on how that meeting went. And then today we were supposed to have a TCP design uh, committee meeting. I'm sorry, tomorrow uh, we were supposed to have one, but unfortunately there was a delay in posting the notice. Uh, and so the next meeting for the TCP design committee will be on the 22nd at 6 p.m. I'm sorry, 5.30 p.m. And I just wanna encourage anyone uh, out there to join. And I will verify that time next week, but right now we have it listed as 5.30 next Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will just say that the Capital Planning Committee has its next meeting next Tuesday prior to the Board of Selectmen meeting. I believe it starts at 5.30. And I would just report that I did attend the MRPC meeting uh, on, the next, on the last Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe uh, Selectman Jeffries requested a report on the planning board, uh, September meetings. Um, I started to get through the meetings. I have about eight hours of, of, uh, a video to watch. So I'm about, uh, three hours into it. Um, I'll, I'll, I should finish it this week and I'll report next week. Some interesting items on the past two agendas on the 14th. Uh, they started the hearings on bright farm, uh, which were continued to the 28th. So I'll give you an update on that. They also had on the 14th um, a workshop on uh, the ANR process and master planning. Uh, so I'm interested to, to get to that. Uh, I haven't hit that in the meeting yet. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, just a little tip if you want to A, shorten your eight hour window and B, have a little fun. You know, I don't know what video player you're using, but you can play it if you, if you could download it and you can play it at like 1.5 speed. Everybody's voice will just be higher and you'll get through the meeting faster, but you'll still hear everything yeah. and you'll have fun with the voices. So I appreciate a little, it. A little tip. <laughs> if I may also recommend to Mr. Dwyer that uh, Mr. Allison is a really easy person to talk to and uh, it, it may be beneficial to just reach out to him and talk to Marjorie and Adam as well. It'll probably save you four hours of meeting. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the policy on approval process for signage on town property. Uh, there's a document in there, it's short. It has eight elements uh, to it. It's, I would say it's red lined, but it's not, it's blue lined. So everybody can see it. And, and, 
we can go down point by point uh, if you want. I'm not going to read it out loud because we've read it before, but uh, anybody have any issues with point number one as, amend, as amended here? Watch out for that car, Jim, by the way. Yeah, okay. uh, that's is scary. <laughs> is, okay. is there going to be clarification that um, commercial properties cannot post signage or rather commercial businesses? It says it applies only to nonprofit and civic organization advertising events on town property. I, I follow that, but but I think that what I'm asking is, uh, you know, if, when someone's like, okay, but what about the policy that applies to me? You know, so I, I guess what I'm asking for, if we want to add in a clarification. We that, could, we could say, yeah, I mean, So I don't know how does the board feel. I mean, I, I think it's clear to say no. You, you know, this policy doesn't apply to you. And, and I guess we could say this policy applies only to nonprofit and civic organizations, not to commercial enterprise. In, in parentheses, not or in comma, not to commercial enterprises, comma, advertising their events on town property. I was just looking at the bylaw to make sure it's not. Included in the SMR. No. Well, the town sign bylaw is about signs in general. Yeah, I, I'm just, as a discussion piece, I just wasn't sure how we capture our intention that only, I mean, I think it's here that only nonprofits and civic organizations can advertise on town property, or, or that rather this policy a lot only applies right, to them. How about this? Does this work for you? First sentence would be in number one. The first sentence would be only nonprofit and civic organizations can advertise their events on town property. Perfect. That that hits it. Perfect. Okay. Does everybody fine with that amendment and with that line number one, where item number one? Okay, let's go to number two. So there are certain town owned designated sites that temporary signs can be placed according to the town's signed bylaw. These in locations include the upper common, the lower common, town hall, teen center, senior center, public safety building, Ritter building, the DPW building and park properties. An organization can request only one of those locations at the same time to allow other organizations the opportunity to advertise their events. Requests will be made on a first come first serve basis. And if all designated sites are being used, requests will be not, will not be granted until there is available space. So my only objection to that or potential change is that, you know, that's a lot of properties. And I would think that one property is probably a little too restrictive, especially especially since they're in different parts of town. I mean, I would say at least two properties that you could put your stuff for the sign on. I don't know how the board feels about that. I agree with you. I think it should actually be three or four because, you know, most of these named properties are all right next to each other or within eyesight of one another for the most part. Um, and if you wanted to hit, you know, Reservoir Road, hit Whalum area and the center of town, that's already three locations. So I would, I would suggest instead of one to change that to three. And request up to three of those locations. How about that? Correct. It gets the Adams thumbs up approval. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I, I was gonna actually suggest something similar. I guess as I read it, one of the things as we talk about up to three locations, is this per event? Because they yeah. could have different signs for different events. Per yeah, well, that's a good point. We should only allow one sign per event per organization, too. One would think. Yeah. Right? Or no? I agree. Three per event per organization. That means if you are, if you're an organization, you you can only invite, you should only be able to advertise one at a time. I mean, you can't be 
you have three things during the summer. I mean, they have to be within two weeks of the uh, event. So I don't think any town, any organization is going to have two events going simultaneously anyway, but they may. Ms. Adams. I think the good news is, is to, we have some guidance and it can always be um, adapted and changed. Um, luckily, we're making this in sort of a proactive way. Um, in the sense that there's not like all these signage problems that have occurred. We're just trying to have something in place so that we have something to offer. Um, and so, yeah, so I think if, if we saw something come up that we, you know, would give example or purpose to have different changes, it feels a little abstract right now because we're not trying to solve a problem. We're just trying to prevent one. So I think we're in better shape just having had created this. I would concur. Did that not address what you wanted, Mr. Dwyer? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine with staying silent on that. And I support the change from, from uh, one location to three. Okay. Are you proposing, Mr. Chair, language that says um, per organization, organization can request? I, I guess I'm asking, how do you want that verbiage? Well, that's a, uh, Organization, I guess we're using the word organizations, right? So organizations can only advertise one event at a time. Okay. So that would be like a number eight then? I'll be number, yeah, I think it would be in number two, or we should probably start splitting number two because it seems to be abnormally large compared to the other ones. But uh, Somewhere in there, Madam Town Manager, we can just put that we only want organizations to advertise one event at a time. Okay. So therefore, we will only, we will only, you will only, your office will only entertain one at a time. Any other things on number two? Number three, that seems pretty straightforward. And it's pretty reasonable. You put up the signs no earlier than two weeks prior to the event, and you have they have to be gone the day after. Do we want to do we want to say um, within twenty four hours, or just I'm okay with it the way it is. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. I brought this up last time. And I think it's correct. So never mind. Uh, number four, request for a placement of a temporary sign advertising an event must be for events that are located in the town of Lunenburg. And as noted there, the Lions Club sometimes advertises things that are outside, like right out of the confines of Lunenburg and Fitchburg at, uh, and I can't remember now that the venue is escaping me, uh, the Eastwood Club, I'm sorry, there we go. So that are for, that are, are for events that are located in the town of Lunenburg or whose organization is, lo well, yeah, or whose organization is located in Lunenburg. That makes more sense. Yeah, so then yeah, we can do both. So if an out of town organization is doing something in Lunenburg, they could come to us. Or if a Lunenburg organization wants to do something outside of Lunenburg, we can do that too. Number five, the signage must meet all requirements under the town's sign bylaw. That makes sense. Anybody have any changes to that? Six, uh, any display of signage not following this policy or not approved by the town manager or his or her designee, the violator will be immediately notified that the town will remove the sign. Seems reasonable. Number seven, request to place a temporary sign on the designated sites on town property may be denied if the applicant or organization has violated this policy previously. And that's what we talked about last time. I would just um, move the word previously to between has and violated. 
Okay, I don't. That's fine. And eight, sign requests will be approved by the town manager or his or her designee according to the guidelines of this policy. Um, maybe I'll duck when I say this, but what, I'm just confused because I'm reading the bylaw, which this thing points to. And it says that temp, uh, temporary sign, uh, let's see. A two-dimensional two plot plan shall be presented and, and approved by the building commissioner prior to the erection of the temporary or a sign, but it's under the temporary sign uh, paragraph. That makes, you know what I'm saying? So this thing points towards the bylaw. The bylaw says that he has to approve it, and this policy says that the town manager has to approve it. You think that would be confusing? Or? Can't, may I? Madam Chair? town manager, absolutely. The bylaw also states that um, it says, uh, it lists the property, which a temporary sign can be placed, um, and the like property determined by the building commissioner and approved by the property governing authority to be public property. So the proper governing authority. Um, this town manager. Yes. So it's both, oh, I see it's both determined by the building commissioner and approved by the proper government. All right. Okay. As Ms. Adams said, I think if people come to us and point out something that we couldn't have foreseen in some either conflict or ambiguity, we can come back and, you know, do what we need to do to modify it. But I think we should get started on it. Yeah, I, well, I guess my question is, so they would go to the building inspector first and then he would he would direct them to the board of, or to the town manager for final approval. Is that, is that how this thing? No, they should come right to the town manager's office. Okay. Yep. We'll create a, a form basically after the policies adopted um, and that I'll review with the building commissioner to make sure that any requests come for, come form to the, the bylaw as well. Easy for you to say. <laughs> All right, so let's get these done one last draft and we'll just quickly review it. If we can have it for next meeting, that'd be great. If it's for the first meeting in November, whenever, just get one final look at what we've just done and go through it and approve it. Okay. okay. Town manager reports and our COVID-19 updates. Okay. I'll start with the COVID-19 update. It's a shorter update this week than last. As far as um, COVID-19 cases confirmed in Lunenburg, as of October 9th, there are 82 confirmed positive cases and one death. Updates from the state, as of October 8th, there are 134,277 COVID-19 cases, 9,350 deaths, 2,360,825 patients have been tested to date. The one new um, update that I received correspondence today on was an eviction diversion initiative. So the Baker Polito administration announced a comprehensive set of resources known as the Eviction Diversion Initiative to support tenants and landlords during the financial challenges faced by the pandemic, caused by the pandemic, pandemic, I'm sorry. The goal of the initiative is to keep tenants safely in their homes and to support the ongoing expenses of landlords once the Commonwealth's pause of evictions and foreclosures expires on Saturday, October 17th. The administration is making 171 million total commitment this fiscal year with 112 million of new funding to support new and expanded housing stability programs during the remainder of the fiscal year, including 100 million commitment this fiscal year to expand the capacity of the residential assistance for families in transition program to provide relief to renters and landlords impacted by COVID-19, 
$48.7 million to home base and other rapid rehousing programs for when tenants are evicted and are at risk of homelessness. $12.3 million to provide tenants and landlords with access to legal representation and related services prior to and during the eviction process, as well as community mediation to help tenants and landlords resolve cases outside of court. $6.5 million for housing consumer education centers, the front door for those facing a housing emergency, $3.8 million for the tenancy preservation program to provide case management support and to act as a neutral party to help tenants and landlords come to an agreement. In order to ensure tenants are aware of these available resources, the administration has kicked off a public information campaign, including a new option available to call the Massachusetts 211 information hotline, effective Tuesday, October 13th. Operators for 211 are trained to answer questions and connect residents to the agencies that administer RAFT and ERMA. An easier path to important information has also been la launched on the state's website at mass.gov backslash COVID housing help. And those are all the COVID-19 updates as of today. Any questions on that? Okay. Thank you. Uh, and and onto the town manager report, announcement of existing vacancies. There's one vacancy on the Architectural Preservation District Commission, one vacancy on the Cultural Council, one vacancy on the Historical Commission, one vacancy on the Parks Commission, and one vacancy appointed by the Select Board and Tom moderate, Moderator for a member at large on the TCP Building Design Committee, and one associate vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Interested persons can get the talent bank form, which is the application form on the town website. And they, those forms can be sent to the Board of Selectmen's office or Select Board's office. <laughs> Free cash has been certified. As I reported at the October 6th meeting, the finance director had submitted the balance sheet for fiscal 20 to the Division of Local Services. The Division of Local Services notified the town today, certifying our general fund free cash amount to be $1,804,185. This was higher than originally estimated as there was 103,000 more in the school circuit breaker account than allowed to be carried over per state law. Once certified, these funds must be transferred at a town meeting during the current fiscal year or the balance would close out at the end of the fiscal year. The plan would be to transfer these funds for use at the annual town meeting in the spring. Electronic voting equipment. I have been corresponding with the town clerk on quotes for electronic voting equipment that could be used for town meetings. The cost of the equipment is an eligible expense under the CARES Act funding the town can submit for. The equipment does not require Wi-Fi or internet to collect votes as the system is completely separated from the web to guarantee security. The way the system works is that each voting member is handed a keypad and the keypad has five voting buttons, including bu buttons marked yes, no, or abstain. And prior to the event, motions or warrant items are typed into the voting software that comes with the system. When it is time for a vote, the warrant item is displayed on the main screen. The moderator then opens the vote and the participants press the button on their voting device to approve or disapprove of the warrant item. The audience can see within the software that votes are being registered in the system. When the moderator closes the vote, the system automatic, automatically calculates the votes and displays the warrant, if the warrant item has passed or failed. The cost is approximately 18,000 for 600 voting devices. In other meetings, events, and announcements, the ZBA has a meeting on Zoom on Wednesday, October 14th at 7 p.m. I'll be attending the Finance Committee meeting on Zoom on Thursday, October 15th at 7 p.m. And this meeting is their public hearing on the special town meeting warrant. The Library Trustees has a meeting on Zoom on Thursday, October 15th at 6.45. The Agricultural Commission has a meeting on Zoom on Thursday, October 15th at 7 p.m. The Architectural Preservation District Commission, uh, Committee has a meeting on Zoom on Monday, 
October 19th at 6.30 p.m. The Parks Commission has a meeting on Zoom on Monday, October 19th at 6.30 p.m. The Board of Health has a meeting on Zoom on Monday, October 19th at 7 p.m. The Capital Planning Committee has a meeting on Zoom on Tuesday, October 20th at 5.30 p.m. And the Open Space Committee has a meeting on Zoom on Tuesday, October 20th at 6 p.m. The special town meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 17th at 7 p.m. And there will be a flu clinic this Wednesday, October 14th from three to six at the high school. And person 60 year and older will be given priority from three to 5 p.m. Just a reminder, if anyone plans on attending that, um, you will need to fill out a form that's located on the Neshoba Boards of Health website um, to bring when you get your um, flu vaccine. Any questions for the town manager? Yes. I'm very happy to hear about the electronic voting equipment for town meeting. I think that will really expedite things a lot. And uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. What Are we looking potentially to get that for annual town meeting? Um, I'm going to talk to the town clerk again about when we would be able to receive those and how soon we could implement them. Okay. That's Any excellent. Other? Excellent. Yeah. Any other questions for the town manager? Uh, I realized that, and this is probably a good enough time to do it, that uh, just to let the public know that in last week's executive session, the town, the, the board, the select board discussed uh, the town manager after, which is by contract to be discussed after the evaluations are done in regards to any salary adjustments and give the discussion of the board, given the town manager's uh, composite review and the work that's been done and the amount of work that has been needed because of the pandemic, the board voted to uh, provide the town manager a 4% raise in light of all the exemplary work and uh, incredible effort during these times. So that puts the uh, town manager's annual salary for FY21 at $134,955. Um, every cent of it well earned. Uh, so continue the good work. Uh, and we look Thank forward. You. Well, second that. Thank you again to the board. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. So I just wanted to, I'm sorry, I probably should have done that earlier in the meeting, but anyway. Uh, upcoming meeting. So we have a meeting next Tuesday. That is our last meeting of October. Then we have two more meetings in November before we have the special town meeting on uh, the third Thursday uh, the third Tuesday in November, on November 17th. Uh, any public comment from the public? I see none. Any public comment from the board? I see none. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, um, Ms. Adams. Aye. Mr. Dwyer. Aye. Mr. Marino. Aye. Mr. Jeffries. Aye. And an eye for myself. Good night, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. See you next Tuesday. Have a good night. Good night.